Hey, uh, hello everyone, it's David Herman, alias Daz the Artist, on June 15th, middle of the month, 2021, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, roughly. This is the interface to Affinity Designer, and I have my file open of my lantern fly moth, and I'm working from a reference on another monitor, and I've got music playing royalty free by Ben Sound, B E N S O U N D, on the laptop, in case you're interested. All right, let's get back to work. So uh, this is part two. I'm going to magnify the wing. I'm working on the top wing. And that is 153%, if you see, right above the ruler in the upper left. Under the... Uh, units box right there it has the name of the file and it's 153 percent so let's let's work on this top wing we're going to go to brushes i'm going to select uh, dry media no i'm not i'm going to select. yeah let's see i'm going to try this brush here chalk on paper for a kind of a crispy textured look and then i'm going to go um, to kind of a off-white, like this, kind of a, I don't know, taupe, or, or, or a tan. And I'm going to pick my brush, and I'm going to start to um, work the wing. So here we go. Oops. Edit, undo. I want to be on a new layer. I am on a new layer, and I want to make sure I've got the right brush. That did not look right. I'm going to try texture acrylic. I need acrylics. And I'm going to uh, look at the values up top. Hardness is set at 100. We don't want that. We want zero. So we'll move the slider down to zero. Want the flow about 15, move the slider down to about 15 ish. And the opacity about 70 ish, like that. So that it's not too harsh, and then I can press hard if I want, like a solid line. I can press softer for granule, and I can press a little bit harder to build. So here's what we're doing. We'll try this. Uh, a little pressure. I'm going to pick the color. See how these programs have a way of jumping around and doing their own thing, which is just the way they work. You know, software is like that. Now, it's not leaving a mark. So we're going to up the hardness. In this particular brush, that means it doesn't leave a mark. We'll try 15. Looks like we gotta go a little bit more. Let's go 30. And there we go. It's just starting to leave a mark. So I'm gonna up the um, hardness again. It's just the, the nature of this brush. And there you should be able to see it at the lower inside corner, just right of the piece I'm working on. I'm going to drag it across on a diagonal. You see that just about midway up there. And it needs a little more pigment to show. So we're sliding the flow. We're tempting that now. There we go. See that little section across the center showing up just vaguely? That's what I want. I want that to show. Ah, yes. Just enough texture not to be... Uh, Uh, what do you call it, like a solid block. It's, it looks stippled, and that's what I want. The word is stippled. I'm trying to think and draw. So there we go, and I'm going to bring this across and start working. Here we go. It is a tricky thing. And you know, I think the parameters that they give you 
means that that's the way it's going to show, is if it's at that those settings in this particular brush. So we're just about back to the way they had it set. Normally, if I do that, I get like a solid blob if something's at 100. But and apparently, this brush, this is the way they want it to be worked. So the designer of the, of the brush, you know. He had something, or he, she, he or she had something in mind. And now we're separating the wing right above the, the bottom wing there. Just a little bit onto the outside diameter. So I can see that. I'm going to erase with the eraser where it went too low. Start over. So I can do that because it's on its own separate layer. There we go. When they're textured and you're trying to do stuff, sometimes it's a challenge. So just got to be aware of that. Sometimes you got to draw over your art and go back in and punch it out with something else. See, that's when I go over the black, that is the texture I want of a moth wing. The way I have this set up now. I will have to uh, erase out those circles again. Not a problem. I'll show you how to do that. And I'm going to get this texture just a little bit better there, the way I wanted it, which is way cool. Uh -huh. Now, if I go to the eraser, see, because it's on its own layer, I can erase just like that and take <coughs> the, the pigment we drew in right out of the black marks. See that? It's, I'm not actually drawing in black, I'm erasing. And I have enough, pig, uh, enough black that it erases, see? So that's that's cool to do. And then there's some white highlights I want to put on there. So I'm going to up my hardness all the way to 100. I'm going to draw in this skeletal edge. Like that. And just, it's a coarse kind of... A, skeletal edge. I think we're going to turn everything up to 100 for this. Just to see if I can not use so much weight of the pen and get the nice line the coarseness. Drawing digitally is a really unique challenges of their own compared to brushes in the real world, the analog world. And so you have to um, you give a lot of thought sometimes to the crafting of a stroke where you're setting the opacity, which is, you know, how, how intense the color is from zero to a hundred. You're setting the flow, which is a uh, a pressure like air in an airbrush and you're setting the hardness which is the force that the paint is quit down with. That's the way I would describe how these work digitally. And uh, it takes thought. It does. It really is a, it's a thinking thing. And sometimes it takes a lot of like pressure on your digital pen. All the tips are different. They wear out differently. Every artist has his favorites. I do have a favorite soft uh, feathered like sti uh, tip by Wacom. And it, it does wear out. And they are kind of pricey tips, so it's just the way it is, the, di the dynamics of it. I'm getting this wing separated now from the top wing. As I 
I start to make it. And I'm, as I'm starting to make it, I will also additionally work into the bottom wing a little more intense black over that so that it has a cupping look to the bottom wing. There we go. And you know if you make a mistake like where I went into that white you just erase. See? That's the nice thing about layering because layering and I can't say it enough helps you keep your work from being non it keeps your work as non-destructive. In other words, you don't destroy what you've done before. You can go back to the point you last started at. Another way to do that is just close your file and don't save. If you don't save, you're good. It'll say, you know, you need to save, and you can say, well, I don't want to save it. Just open up what I had. And whatever your last point is you saved at, of course, will be what it saved at. But if you go over that, you've gone over it. Now, you can reverse. You can say undo and things like that. So fear not. Now, if I wanted to uh, let me save what I got, if I wanted to put like a very faint blue tint around the bottom one, um, let me see the weight of that color maybe like so and I want to just very lightly add that tint around the border in blue to the bottom wing see that little tint I've just put on there and I'm going to move it a little further back into the wing there like that Kind of cool on my own. Mm -hmm. and, and then darken some black in there. If you get it in an area you didn't want it, you just erase. Trying to get that 3D look to the edge. There you go. That's kind of cool, right like that. Yeah. Erasing that back in there. Tricky, so I'll say. Now the tan should be black in that other one. And I'm going to darken that. Top of the bottom wing, under the top wing. This does like a drop shadow where it's super intense and it's also black. So we add the both and then sweep that a touch over the white so you know it's shadow. Like so. Just like that. Put a white edge. Very tiny to the top wing, delineates it from the bottom wing.
separates it, you know. You find the edge of the bottom one. Do ya? Okay, save. Need to check the mail. I should be right back. Sit tight. Okay, we're back. Just had to get the mail. Uh, let's put some new music on. There we go. So this is royalty-free music from uh, bensound.com. Uh, B E N S O U N D. Just give them a shout because they do provide royalty free music for people. I have no connection with them whatsoever, other than I play the music sometimes in the background of a video. get this right get it targeted looks like I'm drawing in black but I'm actually just erasing in the white away from the black and it appears So I've made black spots and I painted over them. And you'll see that same effect. I'm gonna change my eraser powers to be not so strong. And I'm gonna erase. And you'll see uh, it doesn't take everything away. See, like that. You can adjust your eraser just like a pen. Use those parameters up at the top of the screen. And it works just so nice. You know? So nice. Alright, back to drawing it in. So I'm playing with this. Uh, as I try and get the proper merge before we move up. So. These things, I'm telling you, they, when you start drawing insects, you're going to find out just what you can do and can't do. <laughs> it's tricky stuff. It really is. You will develop your skills because you can go back and erase the detail underneath, uh, over the detail that was underneath, and it'll come back to you. And you've got that nice texture surrounding. And if there's a line like extraneous somewhere you can get that proper layer see like there take some of that background out if you want um, I'm going to undo that because it didn't go right but One more. There we go. I want that black bar out of there. So I gotta find the black bar. And now I'll keep going till I find that black 
far. I could spray down some pigment there if I wanted. Just uh, the brush. Outside the wing. Oh, it's completely going crazy. Sometimes doesn't have the effect you want it to have so we've got to find that part and so what I do is I take the arrow in the upper left touch that black area the layer is actually way down there and I didn't know that then if I go to erase I should be able to get that out of there see when it did it took the background out so we're gonna undo it And what we're going to do is go to the eyedropper on her, touch the background. You see that gray spot up there? Go to brush, touch the gray, and then put background over it. And it should, should work on that layer. So we've got that color. I'm going to go all the way down to that layer. I go up a layer until I find this. There we go. See how that's kind of merging even one more? And there we go. Yeah. You can even have some bark stuff going on about this layer. Yeah. Just go past that. Okay, for now. That way I can find my edge back up here at the top where I'll put some white on. Music will start again in a minute. Let me just uh, let me just focus. So I think I'm gonna make my life easier by just drawing right in between. This brush is just too hard to work with. So we're gonna get rid of this brush. We're gonna go down to gouache. We're going to go to the third brush here, which I like. See that texture there if I enlarge it? And now we'll do the edge. There we go. And that gives a little painterly quality where I see the canvas in the stroke. Looks like a weave of canvas. Very nice. Much better control of the stroke. As far as pressure, see I can go around the top like that. Then it's just a matter of eye-hand coordination, how good you are, which can take many practices. Oh, does it ever. And then I'm just going to keep coming around until I get a nice shape, which is hard to do sometimes. I never turn my digital canvas. And then erase. Now, if you erase, you can refine that boundary. See, because I'm on a separate layer, and it's a matter of thinking. A lot of thinking goes into digital art because of the way we build with layers, and you have to think you're on 20 tiers of glass. Like you know, it's like. Um, and so, if I go back into erase, then I can carefully reveal the black stripes. black dots in the borders of the wing up on top. Like so. 
Oh, it's madman. Believe me, it's madman. You'll go back and forth a hundred times and lose your mind. <laughs> I think it's more maddening than digital. Maddening. Okay. Now I want to uh, come down between the two layers of the wings and draw black so just kind of watch the upper wing and see a black stroke appear now that black stroke uh, there's like tiers of wings so I got very little pressure we're going to make a shape and then we're going to make another shape go to white kind of just uh, that's where it gets a little tricky that's way too strong but that's the idea so everything's good but the amount of pigment so I take the pigment down to like 70 60 ish and then I'll apply it see there you go I got my texture controlling the amount of ink, digital paint, whatever you want to call it, and enhancing my, my wing now. And like I say, when you're trying to carry on a dialogue and paint, uh, a lot of times the artist has to backtrack. See me take some black, erase in the spot of black to take the pigment out of it and go back to my underlying sketch, so to speak. Okay, right, just right, Governor. can be very, very tricky. It's going back and forth with the eraser and with the paint itself to get that feel that you want that I'm trying to get to of opacity of color of shadow uh, just a lot of magic going on in that wing they're not that easy it's not that easy to just sit there and do it you know, it takes it takes time. It takes a lot of time. trying to understand like I'm trying to understand the structure 
just how much value weight to put in between. Just, I'm still here, I'm just tidying it up, trying to get the separation right between wings. Keep it elegant and clean. So let's get part there. I'm going to come down to the bottom wing a little bit and do some stuff here to tie it together as I, I will go up and down and sideways and around and everything I have to do to get the wing right. Let's do some bottom wing work because now I'm feeling uh, some stuff that has to be done. We'll put a new layer up there to keep it non-destructive. Got to shape the edge of this wing. Kind of comes through like that. Another fold. The texture here. Very sketchy, touchy feeling weirdness. Like that. And we're gonna put some wrinkles in at the bottom. And then kind of articulate the edge. It is a plastic that's folded. And the save. And then I need some glossier white spots on the red up at the top here. We'll put some down there, just like that. A little bit of black up there. And we're coming down, shaping spots. Some of the red on that. Close it up a little. Like that. And then I'm going to put some glossy white popcorn lights so it really looks shiny. So I'll kind of go like that. Maybe like that. Along this ridge. Like that. Transition. Glossy that up. Erase this fake there. Come back. Hit it again. Like that. See, it has a plastic quality about it, like it's cellophane looking almost.
just just working out right. Just working out right. If you don't want it on the red, say like that. You just want it to show like that. And then clean up the edge all the way around with a nice, even though it's folded, you want to crisp the edge up. Show a little bit about that fold. Enhance it somewhat. Soften the edge. Crisp it up. Creases. Uh, yeah, one or two popcorns. Glossing it up. The folds. And then then you're gonna soften it over the red like that. save and before I get back into the top wing now that I have kind of a separation going I want to get this middle wing uh, speckled up right so I change the brush to this brush and excuse me get into some white and texture blend into the color it gives it both the texture of the insect wing and a painterly quality of canvas and it's hard to do these things honestly digitally it takes thought and it takes patience to be willing to erase what you have to do start over do it right until you get it right to what you intended it to look like. And I don't have the music playing because I am really concentrating as an artist. <laughs> Believe it or not, I have to focus. This is, I don't want to draw it over 10 times, you know. I want it to be right. And I, and I work from, as I've got the top wing now in the works and the middle wing, this bottom working all nicely, we start to shape a wing. Delicate and have the integrity in some spots of stuff here and there that might fall in a wing. Little bits of pollen. Just generally adding the realism into it now and trying like heck to keep a painterly quality 
to digital art to simulate its painting on a real canvas and not look digitally painting in its perfection. It's very difficult, but that looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to show you that at the actual, get it to fit. See that wing now? That's perfectly cool. The top has to be a lot of work done, but the lower half, the red and the black section, those two look pretty good. We're going to put in part of the body before I get to the top because the top of that wing is just oh, such a challenge. So let's get some body going here at the bottom just so you can see where the creature lies. And to do that, we're going to turn back on our creature, turn off the black. So you see, there's the insect underneath with my reference. I'm going to be on a new layer. I'm going to rough in some white just to uh, get this started in some bold shapes, which I won't be able to see until I turn this layer off. Okay, so I'm just quickly blocking them in in a copy fashion. Because part of this project's experiment is to see if I can accelerate the drawing of something. It doesn't hurt to use it as a reference right underneath me. Because no matter how you do this, when you turn it off, it never looks like it. But it does give you a starting point. What you'll notice is there is insect. than it is. As you can see, uh, in the shadow, there it is. It's, uh, it's in there. Like so. It's kind of hiding. So we were going to do that. do a save and I'll turn off the reference and put the black back on. See, So now you can see I've, I've slipped in the body just enough where I have something to start beginning and I will go back put the reference back on uh, where's that layer? Not that one. The one I'm on is above. Turn off the black. There we go. Rough in the rest of the head, just to have something going now. I just want to, I've just got to get it started so that I know where my insect is. And 
And if you think even copying like this is easy, wait till you try it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, it's not that easy. It speeds up because you got the perfect form. But as far as like coloring and everything like that, you still got to do it all from scratch after you get it blocked in. It just gives you the nice proportions. That's why I like to do this on occasion like this. It saves me a ton of work on something that's so articulated, so complex, the thoraxes and the, and the uh, every little detail of an insect is so complex. You can't imagine to try and actually draw what you think is so easy. I mean that. It's not as easy as you think. And then when you see it's like a blue trace in there, some colors, you want to, you know, get that in there. It's just the way the photography came out and the lighting and the development and so on. So you want to play around with that a little bit. some purples up at the top. Everything's very subtle and you won't see it until you draw a lot. But the more you draw, the more you see the color, the more you see the detail. And you can fight all day mixing and matching colors. It doesn't really matter as long as you get the feel. In my opinion, you can achieve very much similar stuff. We'll get some black in there again to separate all these mechanical parts in the wing in the, in the crown, uh, the collar of the insect. Um, let's erase this part up here. And do a save. Turn off the black. See, I'm starting to get the development of the insect. A little bit more and then I can draw from the reference to that. I just want to block in general areas like that. Okay, so let's start with the head down. Create a new layer. We begin to draw the head and we're going to use gouache brushes. Third brush down. Gouache on canvas. We're going to lighten up everything so that we have less hardness and less flow or less opacity and then we're going to start to draw this head in so if I can't find the other eye that gives me the ability to turn the black off I find that little piece draw it Get these mechanical pieces where they belong. Fix it, the, the whole head apparatus. Just parcel it in there. <sighs> yeah. Then turn off, the, turn the black back on. And now I've got enough, see? I can do a save. And there I have the eyes and the head and the cowl kind of blocked in so now I can start drawing with my drawing skills trust myself to add you know on the proper axis at the proper angle in the proper proportion and stuff and then and keep this painterly I didn't want it and I'm going to introduce color but now you can see we got a nice headpiece going This is not that easy. I defy you. <laughs> Go ahead and try it. Go ahead and try it. It looks so easy. 
You will be frustrated, I'll tell you. I was about the first 200 drawings, I guess, when I began my journey into the digital. And it's not important to me to be exactly the same, but it is important to me to mimic the proper proportions, the proper shape, the proper textures, the proper uh, feel of gravity. Gravity is a big thing with me. I mentioned that before. See, get that nice, nice, nice head going there. Got a moss head to everything. It's just everything. And you want it to have some character. So you got to know how to get those eyes to have the soul. And it does. And it's a very much a patience. The top wings on both sides are just going to be insanity. Uh, so... <laughs> Still shying away, taking a break mentally from that while I'm thinking in my mind how I'm going to tackle that more swiftly if I can. It's raining cats and dogs outside. I don't know if that shows up or that noise resonates in the background, like cars rushing down the street and in the water, that sound. I think you can get the feel if I have the radio off, that it's pouring torrentially, driving us mad. We have to work in our gardens, get on our bikes, go on our kayaks. Go for paddles. The minute the sun comes out, you got to get out there and do activities. This year seems to be so rainy in the Northwest. I mean, it's rains like an inch or more every day. Really, it's just pouring down. I can tell because I I have a thing that measures the inches, and if I just put out flower pots, they just fill up overnight with water and you got to get out there and get that out of there you don't want any uh, standing water for mosquitoes there's not a lot of them in the northwest but that's because there's not a lot of standing water you don't want to have it in the cities because we don't know what those carry anymore got to have that taken care of every day it's a thought process I'm loving it. Keeps me an intelligent person, I guess. Makes me think, 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 think. It's like I'm making all these parts work together to make a head and a wing and a body. And, uh, you, you know, mechanically join them. It's, it's, it's way beyond robotic science, let me tell you. The way insects fit together, the tears and the armor and the and the layers. It's just so fascinating. You could stare at an insect sober for three days. <laughs> I mean it. It is so amazing as a life form. And it's obviously where people, you know, when you look at Japanese armor, when you look at the knights, when you look at weaponry all over the world, the insects play a huge part in where man got his ideas. Because he has to get his ideas from something. Man is like a monkey in the sense that he copies and is born without any information that will give him a head start without contact with another human. I mean, without human, uh, his fellow humans, the human just is feral. Uh, never develops and usually would die. But with camaraderie from other humans and the conveyance of language to it, 
and how it's supposed to communicate, then it starts to learn how to survive. It mimics, and it does what it needs to survive. It starts to make a connection with survival and results of its actions. And the insect world uh, it gives you some valuable lessons that if you are in the wrong place at the wrong time, you will be eaten alive. <laughs> The other insects do not see each other. It's the weirdest thing. Like a praying mantis can be sitting in a flower three times as tall as the other insect. Just with a vicious mandible, a look of, I'm going to kill you. And really can't run away to get its prey. It just has to kind of wait like a fisherman. You know, it's hunting like a duck blind in its flower. And the other insect can't see it. It just mystifies me. It doesn't even know it's there with its radar, with its ultraviolet vision, uh, because there's something about its radar system that never turns on so that insects may be able to eat other insects to survive, get their yayas off, hunt, file, save. Boy, that looks pretty good. I'm going to have me a sip of orange juice and look at that with you. Oh yeah, I got my ice. My teacup full of orange juice. Mm. And then a beaker of water. Wash that down with later. <laughs> physical training, my exercise training, constant fitness training, uh, you know, that's going on at the same time. I, d I just do, I multitask, I'm an artist, we do lots of things. So my diet is uh, healthy, very, very little meat. And uh, I eat it many times a week, but small portions. You know, could be a chicken drumstick, two or three, can be a two chicken hot dogs, can be a very small piece of beef or rare occasions, very rare pork, most uh, gyros, but whatever I eat, it's smaller proportion. And, uh, you know, Fruits, vegetables, nuts, gotta eat that. Working on it all at the same time I draw. You know what I mean? I'm like, sometimes I pause, sometimes I don't pause, sometimes I eat a potato, come back. Nice baked potato. Every diet, or I mean every personal diet people build for themselves has their own conclusions and the gurus that tell you you know it's this way for everybody are just full of crap in my opinion I can tell you that you got to eat carbs that's what makes your brain work <laughs> and you can see that they're not going to make it <laughs> that their brains are loony and uh, they're not, you know they got to get their carbs so don't be afraid to eat a baked potato it's not going to hurt you little bit of information besides art. Uh, these things are so tricky, these carapace panels like. So you want to show that break in the spine, it gives you the angle of the animal. Insect, what have you. <sighs> yeah, this is complex, let me tell you. You gotta be very patient. You gotta want to do this.
See what we just did there? We gave it the cylinder shape. And then the plates come together in a funny way. They actually overlap like body armor. Like that. And all of a sudden an insect is appearing out of the dark. See? Out of the bark, the dark. <laughs> and all of that does is making an insect. And you're going to be challenged, rightly so, the same way, same manner, when you try and draw things like moss, butterflies, spiders, insects, deadly mantis, and birds of prey, and whatever else you do to practice as a, uh, an artist. This does not have a tapered body. You would think it has some kind of tapered body, but no, 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 no. It has a large, wide body. And we just let the phone ring because uh, I'm not even sure who it is. It always says scam likely. <laughs> Sometimes I add it. It's very rare that it's a person trying to reach me. It's always some type of uh, don't hang up, you will die kind of message. Google is reporting you to the CIA. Where are you? We need you to check in. <laughs> that kind of crazy shit, you know. Then lying companies that are trying to take advantage of us during COVID. It's an incessant battle. I don't know if we're ever going to win this since the government was trying to, they tried to take it down. And it's in recovery mode right now. Thank God for us that America's still going strong. Thank God. The whole world will get in their head that we all got to work together. There's no point in trying to bring down the other man because they're not going to be your slave. We're not going to do it. America's not going to cave. <laughs> got too many insane people here that are ready to shoot each other. No problem to shoot their adversaries. They kill their own family members all day long, you know what I mean? So, it's just a crazy planet, baby. Crazy. Get your vaccine. <laughs> We're not even near done with this thing. It's, an epi it's a plague, you know? So, plagues are plagues. People don't get the idea of what a plague is, but they will. It will become imminently apparent in the next few years just how deadly this is. I say that to you as a man who is a tattooed artist for tattooed for 21 years plus. Uh, it is in the medical perfection and t profession and tattoos, uh, doctors and nurses and lab technicians and stuff. So even though I've been closed for COVID, I'm in contact immediately at the beginning with emergency room physicians, burn pathologists, people I know to find out about the plague. So take a little advice from the old dozer, get your vaccine. I know we're supposed to be drawing, but uh, the way the phone rings with the fake phone calls and everything else that's happening to humans is just to distract you. Get it together, people. Keep us all safe. Get you back. Remember, there's variants. There's so many variants, they don't even know how to name them, call them, track them. They're just studying it. It's not like a plague starts with a handbook. It's a plague. <laughs> it's the worst thing that can happen to us. Minus, you know solar flares and uh, sunspots and, uh, you know, natural weather disasters that just decimate the planet quickly. Right. It's looking pretty cool. Different tiers of wings, different layers. And uh, shadow effects on the bark would be kind of nice down here. Let's Give the wing a little lift. Maybe uh, 
put that in a color, some light to it. Now, the color is no good. Edit, undo, edit, undo. Take that purple out. And instead, aha. Uh -huh. Now that, because they left me a message, could very well be Wacom trying to get back to me on the puzzle I gave them today, yes, to solve getting me a tool. And I'm not going to stop because I just, in the middle of this cleaning of the edge of the wing and stuff, I just want it right. File save. I will take a break and listen to my phone message and be back. Let's see here. What going on? Well, I'm back after a delay from the screen. I'll go for another till a half hour, like one and a half hours, because it takes a long time to process. They actually take like up to four hours or so to process the videos. Once you get to like an hour and a half, if they're in 4K resolution, which mine are in. So uh, even though they upload in a couple hours, they take four to six hours to really focus a high res. Pardon me, high res um, uh, video in 4K. All right. So, so let's get some music on. Uh, I had a nice break, actually. <laughs> Get a lot of stuff done. But sometimes I need to walk away from the screen like everybody. And when you just do this as a hobby and you're self-employed as a tattoo artist, uh, and been closed because of COVID, you kind of uh, re-experience the world. It's been kind of nice in that way that I get to uh, just you know, study life again a little bit. Slow down. It's hard. It's going to be hard to go back to anything other than just chilling. Because it's, it's not really chilling. I fill up my days different ways now. A lot of exercise, a lot of cooking, a lot of uh, things besides just art, you know. And uh, kind of digging it, so... We'll see. So we're putting in this texture now into these wings. And by the way, you're listening to uh, a little bit of uh, Ben Sound, B-E-N-S-O-U-N-D. They're uh, royalty-free music, and I uh, I utilize those guys. Uh, it seems to work, you know. Every now and then, uh, there's somehow it'll pop up you have a copyright infringement with uh, YouTube but I just say you know delete the frickin song you know take it out or whatever so it's like well, either it's free or it isn't you know but then they want to gum it up everybody's got a way of gumming stuff up for you so till I figure out the solution which could be forever because I just never have figured out the best way to do things because I don't want to pay you know I just want to I don't generate money by these things so there's no reason for me to invest more money all the money went into the computers and so now we're going to draw right over this and then erase back the black or draw the black back in because I want some kind of a homogeneous nature and there's these textures and surfaces and we're going to uh, add them in varying degrees in a unique way like I'm doing and put some grays in and different tones to separate the layers and the uh, all the detail window panes like you see in, you know, there's like a, kind of like, they're like window panes, you know how 
insect wings like dragonflies and butterflies and so on. So that kind of gives it a little bit of volume. And uh, I'm going to smooth out the edge a little bit. Bring that down tight. Top edge. Yeah, I, I'm happy with the way this is working. I've got to, you know, think it all out. Mm-hmm. some kind of like hard edges and stuff that I'm adding in right now you'll see the vein work and um, it's kind of cool to do that you know it's very unusual uh, how they work these veins and things but we're gonna add them in add by contrast and different ways I'm um, you know mine's a little bit different than of course the reference material I like to do my thing um, and maintain the integrity of the project so you see these divisions I'm starting to put in like that and then you, you can utilize your eraser and your highlights and stuff like that so first we're going to start at the top and kind of highlight and erase things. So first I'm going to, going to build this wing a little bit. See the nice texture in that brush? It gives you the, the texture of the wing too, see? You, I've, got, I've got to dial down for a very thin line I'm putting across the outside of the top. You can watch that go down. And now I'm going to put a highlight in here and there, like that, to raise the surface. And then I might, you know, put a hard line in, like get black, and kind of separate, like you're seeing. And then I'll have to hard line with white everywhere I hard line with the dark, just to keep the integrity going okay so there's kind of some basics now I'm gonna add some more white again let me pick another uh, piece of music I hope you're digging all this stuff I do I have no idea what I'm doing you know I just make videos of me drawing and some people like them and some don't and very few people watch them one or two sometimes five so it's a labor of love just to slowly get my art out there slowly get recognized and one day either get picked up by a gallery or some company will farm out work to me for a creative guy that's just invented and draws his own thing where they say hey we need a plant idea or we need an animal idea or we need a hero's idea uh, just give us some comps and we'll you know go from there with their pros but uh, you know, I got ways to do it. It's just whether or not somebody wants me in the game, so to speak. But yes, I got ways to do my thing. This is really a slow build. I mean, when you're talking about uh, nature and the architecture of the wing and uh, complexity of the design and the structure and the mechanics, when you look at insects, there's a lot going on. They are the most advanced robots of creation ever and highly articulated parts and highly advanced numbers of parts. So when you get, make something as a human, like we make a, a toy for children, 
you know, we put a certain number of parts in that and, and we put them in based on the function of something. A lot of times your toy breaks or you rebuild it or you put it together with the instructions and it's missing. You got parts left over because some of those parts are not 100% necessary. And if they're left out, it still functions. Well, in an insect or a plant or an animal, there are no parts you can just chuck out in creation. And when you start to study these things, the beauty of it is just how wonderful the creation itself evolves and makes um, highly articulating sockets and joints and tarsus and different parts of animals and stuff, uh, you know, kneecaps and stuff, the way they work. Of course, with animals, we're all based on kind of a similar skeleton. You know, a head, two arms, two legs, same number of bones roughly and so on. When you get into insects, insects are like spaceships. I mean, they're so evolved and they work, you know, with infrared vision, they work with ultraviolet vision. Uh, they're off radar to predators. They're each one can't see the other. It's it's insane. If you watch videos of predatory insects, say like a praying mantis, and then a bee or a fly or something going by it in a plant, those insects are completely unaware of the existence of the other insect. And I find that highly suspicious. Vicious <laughs> as to why the creator did that. But everything just eats everything else if it crosses its path. It's as simple as that. They're all highly predatory. Some have jobs, you know, like making honey or whatever they're doing out there. But many are just predatory. You know, I mean, they're just waiting to kill and those praying mantis, they just sit in one spot and they wait. And the insect could be literally a quarter of an inch from it. And it's holding its breath and it's waiting and then, boom, just pounces on it and eats it. And that's the end of it. I mean, it's done. It's, it's ceased to exist. And it never knew. If you watch them, we kind of think that, you know, insects have a conscious awareness of their environment they do not it's when you get to the animal scale that things do but in the insect world from what I observe they're clueless they really are they could be standing next to the camouflage predator who just munches on them and starts to eat them alive and every you know the spiders will kill their prey or bundle them up into a bag and leave them on a string for later and let the juices slowly tear at them and, uh, you know, so that they're kind of semi-alive the way they like it. They caught up, like, put them in suspended animation, which for sure we should study that material if we want to put our uh, astronauts into suspended animation when we send them through the radiation belts and stuff like that in the future. Kind of funny, I don't really believe in space travel for humans. Humans are never going anywhere. They're not built for it. It's a different creature that travels. And they don't use spaceships, and they go interdimensional, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm not joking. Uh, they're not creatures like us at all. There's another set of beings on the Earth. Totally unlike us at all. But they got tools. They got saws. They got tools, so that says something. What it says to me is there's entities that always have slaves that use tools, advanced tools, way beyond, but the rulers are not human, and the craftsmen may be human. But the tools, again... 
may not be a conventional tool as we perceive it. In other words, if they use a saw, it may not be a saw in the way that we think of a saw, like a circular saw attached to a motor and it cuts, it has a certain width blade. Instead, it could be like a lasso made out of diamonds that uh, is empowered with a charge that cuts a stone or something. I mean, it's just really makes no sense to me when I look at the creation of stuff. But I do love starting to get into this like this as I build a structure and I start to study it. Because these holes, you know, they're on the surface. So I'm going to draw them like they're on the surface. I'm just adding them in. These black spots, the camouflage of... This is one... Uh, really dangerous moth to crops. This is called the lantern moth, lantern fly moth to be specific. And these guys, uh, I, from what I can tell on the internet, mostly in Pennsylvania, they just demolish crop. They're very, very bad. And, um, uh, You know, different temperatures breed different insects, different uh, messages from nature breed them. We don't know what's going on, why they would want to erase us from the earth and so on, take our food. But, you know, climate change, radiation, all these things are factors. And the intelligent person studies some of this stuff because it's, it's pertinent to us. Why? Because we need to survive. And so even though I'm an artist and I just like to study science and stuff, and I'll draw things 30 times till I get something that I think is artistically a balance between nature, realism, um, representational, artist, uh, artist, uh, what do you call it? Um, artistic quality to it instead of just like a photograph you know it looks like it was painted even though it's realistic it carries a painterly quality as I call it um, and you're watching me do this I mean this is thinking lots of thinking and when I think then I'm really perplexed because <laughs> I go man I never really noticed that it does this or I never really noticed it does this going to add another layer here because I'm happy with what I got and I don't want to destroy any of that. Now if I build old paint over it and I don't like something I can always go back to that by killing the layer I'm working on. Let me get another layer in there add a tone I kind of richer blue so uh, yeah there we go and so something like this there's a light that kind of uh, goes around the perimeter of these, like when they're lit up sometimes. Get kind of like a reflective light. You know, from nature. The way it... Um, there's a word for the luminosity that's created by the shell of an insect. I forget what it's called. And those factors may also be the same factors that are in wings. That... Uh, the way light is dispersed. And what happens is it's like sort of absorbed and one light is reflected back. But uh, in insects, it's very... Boy, that brush I got is just the perfect stroke. I'm happy with that. So now we're going to line some of these edges. And I will pass over parts of the black circle. So you can see it exists in the wing. And then I will actually shine some blue light on those, even.
So there's the music is playing. And we're drawing. And we're kind of uh, doing what's supposed to be done now. It's very tricky to get the volume, to get the the mass, the shading, the lighting, the um, the look, and keep it artistic looking. You know, keep it painterly. In other words, it's a digital art, but I'm painting it like I was going to be painting it mixed media in the real world. Chalk, oil crayon, Conti crayon, paste. Uh, I mean, you know, acrylic, um, colored pencil a lot. Conti crayon is my fave. Conti crayon is my favorite go-to texture making color thing. All right, let's, uh, let's get some of this dark up here. And then kind of bring it down like that. Kind of gives you the high rise to this, to the volume of the wing. Same thing here underneath. Kind of create some of that shift. So get that wing to look like it's uh, curved. Have a, have a round, you know, an edge and a diameter and a, a thing, a mass. Looking very interesting. So hard to do for me. <laughs> Each time I do something I've never done before, it's like ooh, chilling different. Okay. We need to add a little more bark in here. So let's see where this layer is. Uh, this touch there. It's down there. And I'm going to go uh, and add some bark on that layer. Let's just see what happens. We'll get into the... Some grayish tone. Uh, more charcoal -y like that. Just going to... Just going to bark it up a little. Oh! Edit, undo. What did I do wrong here? Undo, transform. Hold it, said the captain. Go with a brush. There we go. And then throw down some texture there, see? So, uh, then I can figure out if I want to be darker like that. Under the wing there, you see where I'm, I can go right over the wing, right through it, and not worry about it because I'm on a different layer. I'm under the layer of the wing. See, so I'm allowed to pass my stroke right over the, the wing. It's the beauty of layers. And, uh, yeah, you get the, you get your background in there, see? But it does not show over the, the wing. Now, right there, it's, it's coming through the wing, which is interesting. You know, if you don't, if you don't abuse it, that can be effective. So we got that going and some stuff up here. Just uh, build this tree a little bit. Some bark. I'll put negative space and everything and textures and so on. But there's a lot going on in trees, you know. Trees are very tricky. Close up of anything is so tricky that uh, you know, you, you want to divot or something in there, like that, you know, the bark. You can see where you have cracks in bark and holes in bark and semi-circles chopped out of it or something. Bark is interesting that way. And I may even want to go up higher to this one and draw there so I can get through everything, see, and break it up just the way I want, you know? Because bark is coarse and irregular and textured, and so I'm starting to want to get more on that side of the, the moth. I'm going to put some textures up in front of the head here. 
bring this together just so the screen is more showing the bark uh, before I draw the other wing on there too I'm going to get some of that bark roughed in and this is just a texture so you can see yeah 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 So you've got the, the striations like a dry brush, which is totally cool. And depending on the pressure is how much more you see that the stroke, you know, that I put down, uh, the direction of the grain and the size of the stroke, like how wide, you know, I draw. Uh, There we go, some rough spots. And then more texture, lighter shades, you know, you want some of that in there before you get to the, um, what do you call it, the, the stippling like above a piece of bark, like you see at the bottom, maybe some colorful uh, plant life growing on it, like a fungus or something. Separations between the, the chips of bark on a tree. You know, it doesn't really have a pattern. It has a grain. It's going in one direction, I'll say that. But pretty much it's random how a tree breaks up. I mean, it, it follows a direction sometimes, but not a lot. I mean, it's, bark is determined by, like, what insects dig into it, uh, if it has a fungus, if the sun's been baking on it, if it's been rainy. All those factors uh, contribute to the real shape of the, each little piece of bark. You know, well, this is looking pretty swanky, and uh, just touch another tune. These are brought to you, by the way, uh, off of bensound.com. Give them another shout out because they make royalty free music, and it's nice uh, to have it in the background a little bit. I play songs I never played before and stuff. I I have no idea what's going to happen to me when I play them, how they sound. Or... Now we're going to go way up to the top here. And we're going to add a layer. And I'm going to get into some of this grain. Really? Oh, it's, it's talking. I've got to switch it. Because those are the kind of things that tell me I can't use the music. Darn thing. There'll be an infringement or something. Suckers. <laughs> they slipped it in on me in that particular cut of music. So I had to redo the page, like reload it real quick onto a laptop. Now you're watching me in the upper right. If you don't know where I'm at, just uh, affecting some of this textures. So yeah, you can, you know, just find a texture and clone it and, um, you know, do it that way. But I, I like to go through the work of actually uh, making it mine. You know, I use a reference, but then I hand draw it. I really hand draw every stroke. You know, and digital art is not like analog art in the real world when you're working on a canvas and you turn around and bump the canvas and your paint spills on it, let's say, or you drop a cup and it's splashed on it or something. In this type of artwork, there's never a stroke that you are not in control of. There's never 
any random strokes. You place every one digitally, and that in itself is a game changer uh, as far as accuracy and thinking. You know, you really think of every stroke that you apply. I do. Because you can't add anything without saying, okay, I want this to be here, I want it to be here, I want it to be here. I'm going to change such and such. See, like I can put a shadow in, say, or something. Um, you know, just a little darker spot that's blocking the light to let you get a little bit of lift from the from the bark, a little separation. I can have some cross graining. You know, I can break things up, give it. Um, so when you first lay down the bark, it's looking like it's two-dimensional, right? It goes left and right, up and down, but then you can add volume by doing some um, cross-contour work, you know? Make a line that follows the side and over the top like a curve or something, you know? By doing that, you stress volume. It's fun. It's, it's work. It's thinking. Every color, every stroke, you know, you got to pick the color of, the brush parameters, like if it's going to lay down um, flat paint, or it's going to lay down stipple. Like you're selecting a brush, round brush, soft brush, square edge brush. You know, you're shaping that digitally. Obviously, you know this if you're an artist. But I'm just saying. That stuff is going on. See, now we're getting a nice bark. The bark is very textured. And it has lots of pits and little holes of black and little holes that have color you know not totally black have some light catches of purple or a brown or something in there glistening uh, moss or it's just stuff you know and then if you want to highlight an area like it's in the sun can, you know, just put some of these white spots in there, or you can, when it's all done, give it a cast with light overall. It's work. You know, it's a labor of love, and I love being an artist, so this is what I'm doing, just like a mechanic would be excited about, you know, putting a swivel seat into a car or doing a brake job or hunting down an electrical system problem or, you know, I like what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, like any profession, if you're good at it, it's going to take you a lot of time. It's not always you gain speed with skill. Sometimes you lose speed with skill because you want to do more. You know, you want to make it look more realistic. And it's more time consuming. And I don't think about time. I mean, I, I'll i cut myself off so I don't put infinity hours into a piece, you know. Most I ever put into something is probably a little bit over 50 hours. But... Uh, Generally, I try and keep them under 10. And it's hard to do sometimes. It is hard to do a lot of the time. Because you, as an artist, always say to yourself, I could, ah, let me go back and fix I could just change that a smidgen and it'll look better, you know? 
and then you can overwork so it's it's a delicate balance when you're there when you're not there you just gotta just compromise <laughs> tell yourself i'm done i'm done i did it that's as far as i'm going you know see now we're missing the top of the uh up there yeah i didn't go high enough because i was cropping with the screen <laughs> no big deal no big deal said the man said the man we'll just just gonna get in there and work some color into that up at the top that's all right like so make that different and I like it. I like it. I like to do just, you know, the lighting of the forest could be totally affecting something like that. And then have a big hash cut through the, you know, make a plane and then make a shadow or a cut line into the bark like you're watching me do across several segments, several sections. You can do that for volume, mass, you know, intensity. some light up there would be kind of nice a little bit of yellow in there too like there's some kind of plant life growing on there a moss or something you know those jelly kind of things I could get down and draw some of that jelly fungus I forget what they call it but it's just kind of cool to have some of that in there without being slightly out of focus because let's say your eye was looking at it you know your eye doesn't focus everything if it's looking at the moth it's, it's not looking at the background. Now a lot of people do everything in focus so whatever your eye goes to it sees that. But see how I drew that out of focus and then I have it more in focus at the bottom and uh, you can tighten it up you know just make these look like little cups stuff. So that's cool. File save and uh, that's actually like a nice little, um, let's see, I want to think about that for one second because I'm, I'm getting ready to like output. I think I'm going to try a little trick here. I want to put a, just a, a kind of a notch in there in yellow. kind of molded and cut out and stuff into that wood. It's tricky, like up at the top there, you see what I'm doing? And then uh, you know, you just kind of make it work. You kind of make it fit to the piece. A highlight or something is just like that, you know? It's really kind of uh, fun to express it this way. You know, uh, You do all your tricks. Do all your tricks to make things recede, come forward, whatever you know as an artist. I always give the advice, bright colors come forward, dark colors recede, large objects come forward, 
smaller objects recede, and that's the basics. Then if you know how to do line, form, shading, color, <laughs> and other stuff, you get different results. You get better results, of course. But see, just the slightest highlight can just raise something up massively over the next piece. Just you think of something as higher, just with that light like that, you know, just a little bit of volume. Looks pretty cool. Get some more gray in there. Little uh, textures go in different ways. You can break it up. Volume wise, and you want cross hatching, and you want not just left and right, but up and down, and follow the sh the curve of the bark. So you have the simulation of three dimensions. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. And gray always works. <laughs> Great color and bark. Now you get some really deep notches like up here at the top. And then try not to make it look like you deliberately shape something to the page. Uh, that's pretty cool. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to export the next section that I post. So we'll go uh, export right there. We're using the JPEG setting. We're changing the digital amount of pixels so it's not as large for the export. And then we go to number two and we change number two to number three. And these are little panels that show the evolution as I post on ArtStation. So uh, I think that's far enough for this video. I appreciate you watching this far. It's almost two hours. I guess I could go another 11 minutes, but I'm not going to. Thank you.